In this video, I want to talk about phrenology. It was developed by the Austrian physician Franz Josef Gall. Gall proposed in 1809 that personality traits, so things like generosity or firmness, could be related to the shape of the skull. So here we see a typical phrenological map from 1800. We see 42 intellectual and emotional distinct regions. The enlargement of local areas of the brain was thought to produce characteristic bumps and ridges on the overlying skull. From those would then determine the character of a person. It was also believed that the size of the head determines a person's character, as shown here. So a larger head got associated with various positive characteristics, while people with a smaller head seem to be less valuable. Today we know of course that this is a pseudoscience, so there are no proofs for this. Or it even has been disproved. But it was hugely popular in 19th century America and Europe. Nearly every town had a phrenology institute. Although we know today that this concept is nonsense, the general idea that brain functions are localized has turned out to be largely true, as we will see when we look at the different lobes of the brain, for example. The big difference, however, is that unlike the phrenologists, scientists today require solid experimental evidence before attributing a specific function to a portion of the brain. One of the most outspoken critics of phrenology was the French physiologist Florent. Florent concluded after doing some experiments in the late 1820s that Gall's idea could not be correct. For one thing, the shape of the skull is not necessarily con correlated with the shape of the brain. And in addition, Florent showed that particular traits are simply not isolated in the areas of the cerebrum, as phrenology claims. At the end, I just want to give an example that shows how functions of the brain are actually localized in the cerebrum. So here we see the French neurologist Paul Broca. One day a patient came by who was able to understand language but could not speak it. After the man's death in 1861, Broca examined his brain and found a lesion in the left frontal lobe, as we see here. Based on this case and several others like it, Broca concluded that this region of the human cerebrum was specifically responsible for the production of speech. And today we call it the Broca Center or Broca Area. So that was it. Thank you for listening and see you in the next video. I've put the main questions and answers of this video in the video description, so feel free to take a look at them for practice.